What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Great night of fights this past Saturday night. You had Hamzat finishing his opponent in the first round. Of course, Donald Cerrone, Nico Price, what an epic fight. And main event, Colby Covington beating Tyron Woodley via rib injury. But I think he was dominating, right Tony? He was dominating. Yeah, he was. But today we're gonna be talking about Hamzat. Is he the real deal? What up everybody? Everybody, what's up everybody? <laughs> so we're going to get into this. We're going to be breaking down Hamzat's fight. Right hand. Normally you see him wrestling. His last two fights in the UFC, he literally threw, you know, one technique to shoot him for the takedown, finishing his guys on the ground. So you saw his wrestling skills. This past Saturday, we saw his striking skills. Well, one of them anyway. One striking skill. Recommend you guys go check it out. But before we get into this, make sure you guys, if you like the content of this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit the like button, and make sure you type some comments down below. Let us know what you guys want us to break down next. Before we break my man Hamzat down, let's talk about this guy a little bit. And Sweet Tea, come here. Good night. Yes, sir. Everybody say what's up to my man, Sweet Tea. Hello, Welcome everyone. Back. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been like, uh, I don't know, since Friday. <laughs> Hamzat, what do you think about this guy? Go. Tough. <laughs> he hasn't really had much opposition yet. Yeah. He's only had three fights in the UFC. And um, he fights, uh, he's been fighting at 170 and 185. Yeah, I hear he's he's had, he had two fights at 185. Right. But the fight in, in the middle was 170. And he's talking about dropping back down to 170 and fighting Damian Maya. It's not officially but, booked. I mean, we're It's talked rumors. about. It's planned. It's not booked. But, I mean, it's like. It's a thing. Yeah. So, this guy's good everywhere. Got the wrestling. From what we can tell, I mean, he's got good timing because he landed his right hand. We haven't seen a whole lot of his striking yet. You haven't really been able to see a whole lot of it. And he's getting pushed. He's getting hyped. Yeah, he is. Right? Because he's Big just time. dominated. He's finished every one of his wins. Everybody. Every one of his fights. Has he ever been tested? Will he ever be tested? How's that going to look? But the question of this video that we're trying to answer is, what happened in that 17 seconds of fight between Hamzat and Mearshart? What made that right hand so effective? All the things involved in just that 17 second. And then before that. All right guys, number one, I think Mirashar's problem started way before the first, first bell even rang. I know the, the hype behind Hamzat is tremendous and we all know his fight in the fight game in MMA. The mental is 95% part of the game. You gotta be focused, you gotta be mentally ready. And I think it, that's where his problem lied in the beginning. That's why you saw a bigger guy at 185 start backing up. You know, the guy's being pushed. He's finishing his last guy. You know he's looking past you to fight somebody else. And I think the pressure was on for him. He had to go out there and finish this guy. So I think yeah, that intimidated him some. Which is why that leads into number two, why Amir Shard started backing up right off the bat, even though he was the bigger fighter. The guy fights at 185, right? And Hamzat is normally a 170 guy, but he's been kind of going up and down. And I think that just got to him, and which led into his downfall. He started backing up, started circling the wrong way, and ended up running into a right hand. Three, let's break that down. So number one, Hamzat is a pressure fighter, all right? He wants to, he wants to walk his guys down, throw a one-two, look for his wrestling, which you've seen him do in the past, and there you have it. Once he gets the guy down on the ground. And right off the bat, the bigger fighter started backing up, right? You normally don't see that. You got, a, you got a big guy, normally you use the pressure, you use the weight to kind of, you know, bully your guy around, but it was the other way around. It was a smaller guy bullying him. So Mirashar started backing up. Not only that, he was circling, backing up and circling the wrong direction towards Hamzat's power hand. And that's what led into his downfall. Right off the bat, Hamzat threw a kick, boom, and just started backing Mirashar up. Mirashar started backing up. Not only that, now think about what he's thinking of. He knows that Hamzat's gonna throw a punch to try and look for the wrestling. And you know when your back's up against the cage, Hamzat is gonna try and take you down. So I think uh, Mirashar was looking for the takedown and really not focusing on the strike, that one, two. And I think that's what, obviously, that's what happened. He wasn't thinking twice about the- you know, Strike. Was, the strike. The setup strike to get to the takedown. Right. And so he- Just kind of ignored it. Get him, get him. That's my man Dave, fly around here. Get out of here, doc. You know? Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking he was thinking. Going to defend the takedown right. before the strike even landed. He saw the strike coming. Yeah. And he went to get out of the way, move, maybe, not sure, something. 
but he saw it, and maybe he was thinking about the, the takedown, and it was just perfect placement, perfect timing, not to mention, like you said, he was circling this way, which gives that even more power. More power. It's a shorter distance when you're in an open stance, especially if you start circling towards the power hand. I don't have to reach as far, and I get maximum power because you're running into it. And as you circle, all hums I did was take a step, cut the cage off, plant, throw the right hand, connected, and in an open stance, the worst place to get hit is the jaw because all you have is your right hand. If you're in a closed stance, right, switch sides for me, sweet tea, you got the shoulder, you got the hand, you can kind of lean to kind of evade that, yeah, that right hand. You see Mayweather and Roy Jones Jr. and those guys, high level strikers do that a lot. Even Anderson Silva, he uses his shoulders to block. But when you're in an open stance, all you have is your back hand and you can't turn that back shoulder fast enough, right? Yeah. So it was just a clean strike right on the button and put him out. I don't know if you saw his tweet afterwards. Go yeah. check his, uh, Mirashar's tweet. He was totally bummed. He wanted to go out there and finish this guy, show everybody this guy's, you know, he's not hype. And then he goes out like that. So there you have it, guys. The right hand that put Mirashar out and pushed Hamzat even, even, even further. Even, farther. even just shot him. He was like in Everybody's talking upper about level at atmosphere. Hype wise, now he's potentially exceeded fighting exceeded the universe. Yeah, I think so. Now potentially fighting somebody in the top ten after three fights. How do Crazy. you feel about that? You know, he's, what? he's in your division. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe he wants to stay at welterweight. Maybe he is going to continue flip flopping and I don't who know. knows? But how do you know. feel? Not so much about him as a fighter. He's legit. Obviously, he's a tough dude. Right. He's proven it throughout his whole career. Nine and zero, all stoppages. He's a monster. But at the end of the day. It's like, you know, uh, those, those people at the top, they have eight fight win streaks. They fought 10 times in the UFC. But, they, you, but you, you know, since the UFC started, you, you have these guys pushing people, right? I mean, when Sage Northcutt was coming into the UFC, they pushed that kid like crazy. Uh, Paige Van Zandt. You see, even myself, after my first fight, they pushed me to fight Mike Brown. You know, somebody who was a way higher ranked than me. You see that happen a lot. And this guy is continuing to win. He's continuing to put his guys out in tremendous fashion. You've seen his wrestling. You've seen some of his striking. What's next? You will be seeing him putting this, putting this all together. His grappling is going to be tested his next fight if he fights Damian Maya, of course. But you know what? You, this, it's something that you will continue to see in the UFC. UFC pushing people. And you know, it is what it is, and all you can do is just train for the next guy. He's dangerous. Anybody in the UFC from the lowest rank all the way up, they're all dangerous. I don't care what you do. You in the UFC, you're a dangerous fighter. So you can't take anybody lightly. But anyway, everybody, thank you for checking out this video. Welcome to the channel, by the way. For all my new people out there, hit that subscribe button. Go check my other videos out. We do things like you know, stretching routines. We have Technique Tuesday where we break down techniques. And of course, we go live on the show. And you know what? Speaking yes. of which. Speaking of which, huge card. night of fights this coming weekend. Woo! What are we going to be doing? Dude, we're going to be going live on YouTube. Make sure you guys come and hang out with me and Sweet Tea. We're going to be breaking down fights, having a good time, watching some fights, hanging out with you guys. So come join us this Saturday. We're going to be going live for the main card. Anyway, hopefully we'll see you guys Saturday. Catch y'all later.